Okay, when everything is right, we should be live now. It's always a little bit tricky with YouTube. You never know. So I'm happy here to uh, actually not announce you, but to present you Lorenz Guardian. Lorenz is our guest this week. And so we are preparing our project, which is the Tempo Research Project, of course. And we're going to talk a little bit about his background and about some nice scores that he brought with him. But I'm not going to show them yet. You will see them in a minute. Um, as always, Lawrence is a nice tradition that you bring parts of your immense library of historical sources and um, with, with actually uh, mind-blowing uh, music as well. But that's for in a minute. So um, I'm going to ask some questions to Lawrence about his background and maybe introduce him a little bit better to you. You all probably will have seen our interviews that we did in Ingolstadt, so in Germany where Lorenz lives. And those were very much arranged around certain topics. So this is a kind of different setup, it's just informal talk with you, uh, kind of uh, Q&A as announced. Lorenz uh, will speak in English, which he is not very used to when it's not working. Not, yeah. We shift a little bit to German, I will translate or help him oh, find yes. the words. For me, it's also a little bit difficult because we have been talking German all the time. And for one reason or another, German and English doesn't work in my brain, but we'll see where we go. So in the meantime, John is here, Bastille, finally stream. Yeah, Drifilos65, okay. Yo, well, I have to explain a little bit Last week, no, actually this week and a little bit of last week, I was in Brugge on the Music Musica Antiqua Festival, so the early music festival. I've played the Hexacotum Apollinis and completely normally I should have my beautiful LP here to showcase that, but I forgot to take one. But anyway, we were there on the early music fair together with Joris Spotvliegen and we met a lot of people but due to circumstances um, here, it was not possible, really not possible to have videos this week. Uh, even not on Wednesday, not on Monday. It must have been one of my first music videos that I have uh, <laughs> skipped in years. But uh, I will make up with you. And I announced a little bit that the summertime, we needed a little bit to calm down with YouTube to make room for other things amongst which Tempo research. So, Lorenz, welcome here in the live chat. Uh, Lorenz is the author of Taktun Pendelschlag, but I guess you all know that. And there we go. I have some questions for him that might be of your interest as well. But if you have your questions, you leave them in the chat and I will read them. So, Lorenz, you. Uh, P. Flazer says hello to you from Landshut. Oh, yes. I guess you know where that is. Yes, yes, Landshut. It's not, far from not England, far away. Uh, 50 kilometers, I think. 50 kilometers, okay. Mm -hmm. And Megamech is excited to be available to watch live. Yeah, okay. Great. So, Lorenz, what I. Of course, no, because I've asked you before and not recently, actually, that's how this temple research, how this journey started. You are a priest, you are now have an academical training uh, in theology, yes. uh, also trained as a musician. But when and how actually did your interest in this temple thing started? It started in the year uh, 1980. Uh, the famous book of Talsma oh, yeah, has see. appeared. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Endmechanisierung, um, Wiedergeburt der Klassiker. Uh, yeah. This famous book, which opened a door, a okay. great door. Uh, I was in a course. Uh, of organ music and there um, this book was presented 
and Talzma was there. Oh yeah, he was there. Yeah, he was okay. there. And I was electrified. Electrified. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's because because you already had a court a, a, a run into problems with. Yes. With, with uh, not yet, but it was interesting and uh, the first contact with clavichord was also in, in also this there. Uh, okay. fest, uh, in this uh, course or how you say yeah of course yeah course. lessons yeah master mm -hmm. class yes and now uh, after the lecture of this book i began to uh, search for the research yeah uh, for evidence all old uh, yes. sources uh, sources yes and found uh, very interesting sources um, operas french operas yeah with metronome indications and there i discovered uh, you very have fast very fast tempi um, to spell uh, syllables um, eight until ten, eleven syllables in a second. So for the singers, and, so fast. And yes. over, over. You complete uh, opera. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I, I was sure it has. Uh, it, that's a problem, uh, a systematic problem that. Uh, um the, it can cannot be that uh, these are mistakes mm -hmm. of indication uh, it I, I search for for the reason and so you you came into you you had this course with with Bernard Etzkes, I believe you had with Etzkes. Etzkes and Talsma I, yes. was there yes, and yes. so you read his book his famous yes. green book yes. Talsma and then something triggered your mind saying from, yeah. hey this might be possible yeah. you ran into some old scores uh, was an opera from o Aubert, Aubert uh, Poil Dieu, quelques autres. and then you come to the conclusion well there might be something that yes. Talsma is on the right track yes. and then there is a moment here where you decide I'm going to devote a large part of my life to this because you have yes. been working yes. on this project for yeah. years yes and so what Since was the then, moment that you say, I have to do it myself? Oh, it was not a decision. As w it, it was a, a searching. Uh, there are periods uh, in which I thought, oh, no, forget, forget it. You can't find the solution. OK. And yeah. And time after time, you, <laughs> yeah, you it, it I, was I like began, a microbe. I, I, f I found another other thing. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I have to search the solution. Yeah. And I began to read the important book of Klaus Meeling. Yeah. And uh, suddenly I, I discovered a problem in in his in his uh, in his work yes in 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 quotations yeah. of his uh, work as a um, a quotation of Mersen. yeah so to uh, point this out for people yes. Klaus Meeling has written a book about it's a kind of standard work became a kind of standard work on the uh, French pendulum notations Yes, and that's actually where that was the second major work that you've read. Yeah, and then oh, yeah, yeah oh, and you, you're saying now that parts of his quotations to defend actually the opposite of what you were saying. Yes, that every every indication yeah. is to be taken literally. Yeah. I discovered a problem. Yes, which he wanted to uh, to hide a little yes, bit. Yes, yes, yeah. and this problem was was the the uh, term in. Terminology. Terminus Termin second. Yeah, yeah, the second. And yes. then I, I, I thought I have, I have found a door uh, uh, for a solution. And then you started to communicate over email yes. with Klaus Meeling, yes, which I yes. found a little. For yeah. people who don't know, you have been in email contact for over twenty years. Yes. 
and yeah. I've witnessed some of that when you because Lawrence became a good friend we met uh, 10 years ago I think on a, on, on, on a no, temple symposium yet, yeah. and yeah. so since then probably every year you spend a week holiday here yeah. And so I've witnessed sometimes you communicating with Klaus Mieling with very long elaborated emails from your yes. part, but also he returns every yes. in detail. Yeah. Yeah. But you've never met. Never met. Nev once uh, telephoned. So I have heard his voice one time. <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, over yeah. this 20 years of email conversation, you, the first, uh, you, don't, you, you, written, didn't, yeah. you didn't come closer to each other. No, no. Uh, where he see uh, black, I see white. Where he see white, I see black. Okay. Uh, all this, and always the same problem. One or two, always the same. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, but on the other hand, he was very helpful in sharpening your own yes. ideas yes. because he was yeah. actually your worst of your best yeah. critics that you could yes. can imagine. Yes. He, by yes. definition, as I understood, yes. was opposed yes. to you, what yes. you were searching for. Yes. And so he, by trying to reject every idea, you yes. were forced to go deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper. Yeah. yeah, that was the best for me. Yeah, and, and then finally you came with the idea of writing your own book, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. which is a huge challenge, not being connected to your university and not surrounded by a lot of people who could help you. You, you, mm -hmm. you basically were on your own to yes. do this yes so and if you see the book it seems not to be a big one but it's it's full of text it's really a huge work yes it's very compact i think yeah uh, for in german uh sense it's 200 yes. pages for us it's, yeah. it's rather extensive but yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. and so then you start writing your book mm -hmm. and there comes a moment where the manuscript is finished it's you you have the feeling it's 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 a unity Mm -hmm. And then you just write a letter to Katzpichler, which is one of the most renowned musicologists. Uh, as uh, a friend, yes. As a so you asked him yeah, to. I, I know him. him uh, you knew him? Yeah. You know I, him. I, I knew uh, him. Um, he's a seller of old scores. I have uh, found in his sortiment very, very beautiful yeah, yeah, examples. Okay. He's for, for me a, a very important man. And so there yeah. is an interesting story in this in how he decided to publish it because they have a board of editors to which you have presented your manuscript amongst wit if I'm right was also Klaus Mieling so they had to decide whether your book was worth published. In. Yes, yes. And they actually rejected it. Mm -hmm. So they were, they, they decided actually not to publish it because of your conclusion. Yes. But how come that that, that Katzbichle decided to publish it anyway? No, he, he was convinced. Uh, we have talked uh, uh, and have had discussions, and he was he he, he have. Er merkte, ja. dass, dass meine Argumente gut sind. So, he was convinced by your arguments. Yes. Also and he laid next to him actually the decision of his editorial board. Yes. yes. And how was this book then received? Tja. Did it make a, a huge impact or not? No, also uh, the reception is not... Um, only uh, Klaus Mieling has, uh, <laughs> has written a very bad uh, yeah. re recension. Yeah, in uh, which he didn't take any of your closing yes, arguments. Yes, that's, that, that's, yeah. Yeah. So for people watching, and we're going to your questions in a minute, um, that's actually the project that we are working on, that mm -hmm. this book as detailed as it is, you have since then continued yes, your research, yes. found a lot of new information. Yes, and uh, I have to um, correct some uh, yeah, arguments. Obviously. Also, yes, yes. So, and then we met in Germany. I don't know 
I don't remember what was in place where we met the first time on this temple symposium. Uh, was, my yeah, my subject. Well, now where we both of us met was in in yeah. s- southern Germany, I believe. Yes, in Öpfingen. 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 Uh, this sim- symposium with uh, Wolfgang, Wolfgang Weller. Weller. Yes. And Johann uh, Sonnleiter was two, also there. 2011, I think. No, no, earlier. No, no. No, no. I think 11. It must be because... After, after my book and... My your book, book was still in manuscript. It wasn't published. Ah, so. Ah, yes. And I have here uh-huh. the first letter that you sent to me. Uh-huh. Ah, yes. That's the date. Endlich bekommst du meinem Buch. It's 2010. Ah, ah, yes. So it must have been 2009. Oh, yeah. Bec- I know, because my clave accord was brand new. It was the first yes. trip abroad. Ah. And was a really the first concert on my clave accord ah. was given in that ah, festival. That's so and you've played also then on my clave yes, Remember, yes, you have yes. played some Bach in Czerny. Yes. With the yes, Czerny metronome. Yes. Yeah. And, so we and st- Haydn. And Haydn, yeah, was yes. very nice. Yeah. And I must say, at the time, I've played Haydn too. Yeah. And much faster than yeah, actually yeah, it yeah. should be done. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, in a way, it was weird. It was not weird that I was invented, invited to that uh, temple symposium, but I was, I was with one leg in the temple research and with the other leg, I say, well, I follow my instinct. Mm-hmm. And so when people uh, watch my videos and certainly the pathétique on clavichord, you know, the recording. Mm-hmm. It is not according to this theory. Mm-hmm. Complete, for instance, the slow movements in mm-hmm. Upfingen, I was totally unconvinced that I was still in the Talsma atmosphere that they yeah, shouldn't yeah. be in double beat and that there was a var- variable use of metronome. And you said yeah. then it's not. Mm-hmm. There is only one possibility yes. it's yes. double beat or single beat mm. Mm. and i remember that i said to you you're wrong you're really wrong and it took i think six years before you convinced me mm. actually i convinced myself <laughs> yeah. and so every yeah. time every year yeah. Lorenz came here it's the same argument are you st- are you still in for the double for the variable use or not i say yes very much and it's yeah. And for me, it's changed with the Munich sonatas of Mozart, mm-hmm. where I played the adagio of the D major, yeah. the last one, and the variations have such a long, beautiful adagio, mm-hmm. where I made my own metronomization for, yeah. and then I checked with Moschlis, and to my surprise, he gave exactly the double. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think we yeah. have then. made a telephone call then, and he said, Lorenz, yeah. I have to say something to yeah. you. Yeah. I think uh, after six years, <laughs> you uh, are right. Uh, 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 and then my journey began. And actually, you came a few weeks, months later. And then we made that rather famous ping pong video now. Uh, yes. It was our yes. first uh, interview. Uh, uh, where you introduced people to Merzen also. Yes. Uh-huh. So uh, we have some announcement on the project. Mm-hmm. But bef- And then I'm going, we're going to dive into your to your questions and but first I will show you some of the beautiful scores you brought with me and maybe we can talk a little bit on that so first of all Tomaszek. here is a beautiful row of scores and I'm going to show it in a second of a certain Mr. Tomaszek. these are Beautiful score. So, Lorenz, these are all yours. Yes. When you play very well, you are the owner of this. You can play it. I cannot play it. Oh, you are <laughs> you're a very good keyboard player. So, six elogues. So, our original Eclo- scores. Eclogue. Eclogues. Eclogues. Yeah. Um, I can show you. And so, Tomacek was is today a rather unknown name yes he is known mostly for his metronomization of the don giovanni of mm-hmm. mozart we've made two episodes on the channel you can easily find them in the playlist or just type in the search uh, icon on on our homepage on youtube uh, tomacek 
or Don Giovanni Mozart and you will come there. But he was a little bit older than Moscheles. Moscheles knew him in Prague. Yes. I think they both had lessons from a certain Mr. Weber, Dionysius, yeah, well, Dionysius Weber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Prague back then was, of course, Mozart city. Yes. This is wonderful music, actually. Opening ways to Schubert yes. and even young Chopin. There mm -hmm. is something of this. Yes. Uh -huh. And all with metronome indications. Not, not all, not but, all, but, very, but most, yes. Very interesting uh -huh. ones. Yeah. Okay, what's this? And very clear. Also that it's also too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh, egg look. It's a newer cover, but it's actually an old, old print. So very characteristic. Yeah. So a very own style. Uh, it's not. Uh, not the common and f very few of these scores are on the online Petrucci library so the IMSLP yeah. it's rather unknown music unknown yes you can say it and it's the interesting Eclog. thing about the Tomacek is it's good music it has a strong tradition it's connected to this beautiful Tomacek Don Giovanni Fink story that we brought on the internet but the thing with unknown music is that if you play the metronome numbers metrically, so in double beat, nobody even realizes it, that yes. it is in double yes. beat. That's it's only with the music that we know so well yep. that people say, oh, yep. it's slower. And so it's beautiful music and it are all showcases for the metrical use. Mm -hmm. Then there is something else really nice. We'll just take the next thing. So, your Lorenz, you can comment on this. Yes, also. Um, Six symphonies, symphonies from, from Beethoven. Um, arranged in, uh, by. Are arranged by. So, um, original scores. Hummel. The four. The sixth, the fifth one. Two hands. Two hands, yeah. Very early Polonaise of uh, Morsulis. All music that will go very well on the new piano forte. Yes. Even Marshallis. So Marshallis comes from this whole tradition. The, 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 the early yeah. Marshallis, you can say. So now the young for the pianoforte. For your instrument, the violin. Yeah, violinist, it's uh, perfectly uh, in, yeah, the, it's in, in, in the time of the instrument. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, all metronomized. It's really nice music. And so Lorenz brings these piles of music at the moment that we're going to start to record all of Beethoven mm -hmm. and he just adds some music on that pile. Mm -hmm. Bagatellen for piano, Beethoven. Of his uh, Gesamtausgabe, Haslinger. Which time is this? Uh, I think 1830. Uh, so about, really original. About, yeah. yes. It's not that the original score, that's my feeling. I, of course, Urtext editions, we, we must have them. Yes. But then this, you will not solve the mysteries by playing from old scores. It's mm. just, it connects you to history. It's, it's so nice. Mm. Actually, mm. I, will, I will probably not use them because I will not write my fingerings. Mm. But who is this Mr. Wojciech? I've never heard of him. Uh, contemporary to Franz Schubert, um, also dead, uh, very young. Perhaps in someone on the chat is yes. knowing, knows this composer. Um, near in, in, the, in the same year as, as Schubert, also a contemporary. He died very young. Uh, huh? Very young, uh, 30 years, I think, N not, not yet, 20, uh, and it's in it's the 20s and it's interesting music very very fine music very fine music this is an older score than 1830 no yes yeah, that's that's, that's uh, the first print i think yes wow. mm -hmm. yeah. actually we made the agreement that once i've recorded this the scores will be returned to you but then is yeah, the, yeah. the uh, we the, shall see here you see this this is actually one volume of two Yes, of two, yeah. And this is a Bible. 
I've often told, talked on the channel on Carl Czerny and yeah. Carl Czerny Bach edition, which is rather difficult to find in print. So this is the first volume of the Gesamtausgabe. Not the first uh, print, but the first Gesamt collection. collection. Yes. Yeah. So here you have the Bach works in Czerny's edition. To the partitas which I've recorded last year. They will be published end of this year. I didn't look on Czerny back then. It mm -hmm. was before my, uh, before our ping pong video, actually. Mm -hmm. The partitas mm -hmm. were just recorded when you came. Yeah. But Czerny's metronome numbers actually, metrically, are very close, I think, to the 18th century tradition. Yes. Yeah. Tempo I Ordinario. Have, yeah, I have, uh, um, discovered this this uh, the two the French uh, um, pendulum indications yeah are very close also quants quants yes yeah. yes yeah it's of course difficult to compare but the tempo ordinario that we've talked about on the channel also a lot 60 for the basic bells let's say in common time four four for the quarter note mm -hmm. That's exactly the double with yes. Czerny. Yes. And so that's a clear indication that Czerny uses double beat. So yeah. thank yeah. you, Lourdes, for bringing this. And let's now, unless you have something to add, we, yeah. let's see if there are questions here. I return in the chat a little bit in time, uh, so not to miss any, anything. And if you have a, a question that I missed, just type it again. I will see it at the end. So I'm going to the chat, Rokutake. So say hello to you if you haven't mentioned your name. Helgi Bjarnason says, hi, how does music that is sung, so for singers with text, fit into your tempo research and tempo marking? So how does this double B theory fits with singers and with, if you have... Um, mm, all right, I, I didn't have the chance to meet yeah professional singers that's something we that's are going to introduce yeah. but in general if you you're kind of singer yourself if you if you if you try things out did you ever run into problems because that's a question related also to what you hear a lot that if you apply this theory to leader yes. to songs or yes. opera that singers will be out of bread they cannot uh -huh. have alone is that oh, no, that's no problem yeah no, I, I have uh, discovered sources with uh, meta as a uh, vocalism uh, vo yeah. vocal compositions with general uh, metronome indications and signs for, for breathing. breathing yes and very interesting you can see coloratures also very great uh, long lines of, of yes notes, yeah. with several in between in between yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you have time to to uh, breathe and yeah um, but it's something we're going to die yes into. once the pianoforte is here i the plan is to to work together with with musicians to really try it out that's uh, that's for yes. me the most fascinating yeah. thing yeah. of course yeah. um um mega mac what's the best way to introduce people like my professor to this new tempo research that's a really good question yeah. do universities have access to similar source documents that lawrence is using for his research I think yeah. I, we can ask yes, but yeah. because you're you're just one of the greatest tools that you have now is Google Books. Yes, book, uh, yes. it's a very great help. So there yeah. is an awful lot of historical yes. sources being yes. digitized by Google book and universities. Erweiterte Buch su Buchsuche. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yes, that's very helpful. Very so helpful. also for you, if you would like to do some own research, just type in some keywords in Google yes. book search mm -hmm. and go for the oldest sources. Mm -hmm. They are often in German or in French. Yes. 
we also have of these old sources actually a lot has been translated into english as well uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like Carl Czerny, for instance, is yes, translated into yes. English and mm -hmm. I believe also in French. French, yes. Hummel. Of yeah. course, Hummel is not a temporal, really temporal related uh, resource, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But then the other part, how to introduce, if you are a musician on the conservatory, you're a student, mm -hmm. and you are interested in this kind of temporal research, what would you advise them how to introduce them that, that to their professors? Hmm. Uh, perhaps uh, present examples with um, metronome indications which, um, which are not possible or yeah, very difficult. Yeah, very uh, contradictional to the character. Uh, for example, a, a funeral march. Yeah. You have a, an idea of go of, of the steps, the, the tempo yeah. of the steps. And if you see uh, compositions with a clear... Um, um, you had an example of Chopin, eh? the Chopin. Yes. Uh, a, a better example would be from Karl Reinecke. Uh, he has composed a funeral march to the death to, uh, in honor uh, of uh, Kaiser Wilhelm, Did Emperor say, Emperor yeah. Wilhelm, yeah. and uh, there, uh, the steps, the, the the tempo for the steps are hundred steps in per minute. Das ist dun, 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 ungefähr. Huh? For a funeral march yeah. in honor for of the deceased and emperor. And the, in this in this matter, uh, they have uh, buried. The channel yeah. also in, 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 in this tempo. Oh right? yeah. Very very <laughs> quick. And so metrically it's it's much that much. Dim dum dim bum. And that's the idea of a funeral of march. A funeral march. Beethoven yeah. as well? By uh, Beethoven is very, very large. Uh, yeah. uh, one is uh, of his uh, third third uh, symphony. symphony. Uh, that's also the uh, little bit uh, um, same. Yeah, eighty uh, steps in the minute. That's the normal step. Yeah, yeah. it's an andante. Eighty. It's yeah. you know, the normal, and uh, half. It's very slow. Yeah. Tim, 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 tim. Up. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, also the double, I think that's the ordiner, le pas ordinaire. Yeah. Uh, eight, so eighty. So characterical yeah. pieces are indeed very, very good. If I would add something to that, if you really want your professors to convince, to at least open, give the opening for you to do the research. And I know from experience how difficult it is. I was in Amsterdam at piano class. Mm -hmm. I had to even change professor. Mm -hmm. that because I was mm -hmm. already busy with that mm -hmm. I would um, I would make the case for the metronome markings themselves mm -hmm. because if we today study historically informed performance practice well I've made the case a lot for tempo because tempo is your foundation of everything it decides all other parameters like articulation, yes. phrasing, character of the piece, yes. even slight differences make difference. And we know from the people who gave us those metronome markings, they did it for us. They were very extremely serious in the accuracy of those metronome mm -hmm. markings, mm -hmm. which we today actually deny mm -hmm. actually completely. Um, yeah, I think we can say almost completely because mm -hmm. even if people try to of play in what they think is single beat, so the literal, you see, we saw the other days in a symphony, certain passages certainly much lower because mm -hmm. it's not consistent. So, and if you combine those two, tempo is important. We have the tempi of Beethoven, Czerny, Humoris, combined with the no notion that they were accurate tempo indications not just something to reach 
that is something I think a professor of a university or a conservatory should have an answer for. Mm. And if not, I think that can open the mindset a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wolfgang Marmadiers Mozart is here, Lorenz. Here in the chat, you see? Uh, he says hello to us. Ah, so, Mo oi. <laughs> that, that's astonishing. Yeah, but I know him for a while. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a YouTube yeah, name. Yeah. Um, we can actually ask Mozart. We would very much uh, uh, like to have his original metronome marks, which he couldn't get because the metronome was not invented yet. But anyway. Uh, Fidel Flores, yeah, Me Mega Mac has also notion, made a notion that Mozart is here. <laughs> um, Greg asks, good afternoon, could someone point some source document when it's basing his double B theory? Okay, that's good and good question. What, what are some key sources that you base your... Mm -hmm. also, um, very important source is Mersenne. Then Harmony um, Universal. Yes. Then uh, yeah. older noun so sources, um, also pendulum uh, indications, and uh, and then going back in time into the mensural notation. Yeah, by the help of Mersenne. Yeah. yeah. We have made an episode on Mersenne, several actually, and Lorenz pointed out that Mersenne is actually a kind of bridge figure between the old mensural style, so the Renaissance music you would say, and then more the Baroque new kind of style. He is commenting on both. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have pointed out also in that video, that's a very important source, the secunden tact, so the mesure mm -hmm. de second, second, the, the second time, so the Tempo Ordinario, mm -hmm. which he defines with the help of the adjustable pendulum, yes. which was very new for the time. That's, he was the first who... And there is, starts the discussion between you and Mr. Meeling. Mm. Mersenne writes uh, the one second uh, mesure mm -hmm. is being indicated by a pendulum that goes one second to the right and one second back. Yes. And so there Mr. Meeling says two seconds, which is a result of this uh, pendulum, cannot equal one second. Mm -hmm. But as I think, and you think too, I, that what Mersenne is doing is indicated the one second mesure, the, yeah. the tempo yeah. of one the second. The unit of this, the double unit of, yeah. of uh, tactus. Yes. Which, you, which you taught me that for in order to indicate time, you need two points. Yes. At least mm -hmm. one point mm -hmm. is not doing anything yeah. once you return to original yeah. point yeah. you have the movement that's the measure of of time yeah uh, two two points yeah give a measure one point is is open yeah two points give give a measure yes and yeah very important are uh, the texts uh, wh uh, which explains uh, the the terminus Mensura, mm -hmm. mesure, and that's a very important uh, source. Is, yeah, also there are several sources. Um, uh, the main uh, source, uh, yeah. uh, source of the Hauptaussage yeah. uh, is a difference between the measure as uh, uh, the whole bar yeah. and measure as uh, tempo, ti tempo Time. indication, yeah. Yeah. also Zeitmaß. So the double understanding yes. in German yeah. would say yeah. Takt. Yes. In English it's time or so time is yeah, done time. Is, the, is, the, is, the, yes. is the tempo notation. Yes. Bar is more the yeah. is the, the, the relation the group, between the, the group, group of, of notes. Yes. In French, yeah. you have mesure, yeah. which yeah. is tact in German, mm -hmm. and there you or, have or the mouvement. Or mouvement. Mouvement is Zeitmaß. Yeah. Temps uh, uh, or the um, time in in English. Yeah. Bar is is the group of a tact. And then uh, you're leading to another important source, I believe, is Hauptmann. Yes. 
very important we have a segment on yes. YouTube as well. Yeah. On what is a metrum? Uh, he, he explains the 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 idea of metrum, mm -hmm. which is the key word for metro. Metronome, or, yeah. yeah, or the metrometre, pajo. A metrum uh, uh, is uh, a twofold unity. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole metrum uh, is built by three points. Yeah. First, second, and uh, the, comple uh, the, uh, the completion the of the completion time. Of the it's yeah. like Merzen. So you have point A, you go to point B, which is actually already the second point because yes. you started with point. Uh -huh. And once it returns to its first position, the completion the of the of yes. the metrum yeah. as, as, yeah. as a fact. Yes. yes. Which is actually like we are still doing at we conduct. Conductor will yes. not start the orchestra like this, he will start the orchestra like that. Yeah. One, yeah. two, yeah. and you come yeah. back. Yeah. 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 Another important source is a little bit up for debate, but actually, and that's the thing. If you are in for your own research, you have to open your mind for a certain perspective. If mm -hmm. you are reading sources, we've talked on this with the clear goal to reject something, you will read whatever you want to read in the yeah. sources. But the Melzel instructions 1817 are is a key source for this yes. endeavor. There, they, they, there is explained exactly the double beat theory. Yes, <laughs> but uh, it's not not yet um, es ist nicht ganz bündig also ja. es gibt einzelne äh, Aussagen die die man dann doch wieder anders verstehen kann aber er hat eine ganz klar uh, clear passage uh, ja. passus in in his uh, instruction which uh, shows it, the it only can be understood yeah. from this principle and, and ne, nobody has discovered it not yet talsma he yeah. hasn't not he has not uh, it's an interesting thing yeah. I, we're going to make a video on this instruction because yeah. yet even this afternoon we had of this when, when we finished uh, lunch we had a long discussion on the last sentence yes. of the instruction yeah. and the thing is that i read that quote only after i discovered your book so i mm -hmm. was i'm i'm convinced by nature by for the for the metronome numbers themselves you have to be able to play 90.99.9 percent of the metronome markings they are meant to be played so if, if that's not the case that's for me the most important thing but then reading this 1817 melzo instruction Lorenz, you were saying the last sentence is problematic and i say how problematic it's as abundantly clear as possible so you see how important it is to take a perspective mm. and you will never ever find yeah we do we do one, one last source but very rarely they in those days they didn't respond to our questions they thought that they were teachers for their context for their generation within the context of their time what we expect sometimes to have us proof sometimes i have the feeling that People would be only convinced if they would, ha if we would find a letter from Beethoven himself, talking to us two hundred years later and saying, "Hey, remember that if I make a metronome number, it's tick tack and it's not tick tick." But of course, they didn't do that. A last source, and then we go to the next question: Is that source of Edvard Jeu, eighteen thirty-eight, which it's a golden source explaining this in. A clarity that for even for us was mm. groundbreaking but anyway we will we will in the coming time make more things available for you um okay got a little bit further time for elimination is here um the slow convincing is often deeper than a quick snap judgment yes then so was double beat and single beat interchangeable like choosing metric or standard or is only one true <laughs> both were there hmm. uh, there are two methods you can see it uh, uh, 
one uh, uh, there are authors which uh, uses the single beat mm -hmm. but consequently yeah, in their work uh, the f famous one is novello, uh, novello. yeah uh, in his uh, ausgaben edition editions he uh, notes obviously uh, in in using single, single beat, beat. You can compare it with uh, also, uh, Hummel. uh, yeah, Hummel's yeah. Uh, yeah. indications for similar uh, works um, with similar uh, rhythmical structure, uh, which is the double. Yeah. Uh, also. And, and so you can you can prove uh, this one is uh, in the in the. With um, or the by the method of, of uh, single beat, and this one is double beat. So you you can find uh, both, system. but uh, principally or, the, or uh, generally, yeah. generally, uh, you you have double beat. Double beat, and mm -hmm. that's also funny to see that in Great Britain, there's the most. There is a yeah. start of single yeah. beat use, yeah. like Vincent Novello, and yeah. you have and yeah. other sources Others, as well. Yes, but once you understand the nature of the metronome markings and connect that to the notation, which is really important, you can only understand the metronome markings by understanding also the notation, which yes. would go to the, 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 the system of uh, tempo ordinario. Yeah, that's uh, then it's so obvious in most mm -hmm. cases. When it, whether it is double beat or single beat. Mm. But in the 19th century, throughout the 19th century, I think 90% is double yes, beat. Yes, I think too. Even going so far to Max Rieger and Karl Straube, yes, 1915, yes. they were both yeah. good friends. Yeah. Straube doing yeah. all the premieres of Rieger's work, making his own edition at the same time where the Rieger still was li lived, and so Strauss metronome markings are about a half mm -hmm. of Rieger and yeah. they never ever discussed, yeah. discussed it. Yeah. It's only after 1920, 1925 yeah, that yes. people started yeah. to wonder. Janacek. 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 Uh, he has, uh, I have um, discovered um, folks tense so uh, dances, yeah. popular dances. And you, s you see that the steps are so. <laughs> yeah. Anton yeah, Webern also, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 metronome number, astonishing. double beat, but his time indication for the piece is exactly the, the uh, what I said, the double of the metronome double, markings. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then starts the confusion with this work. It's one of his pianos works. I don't remember. I have to look it up. That there was discussions in, in musicology, what mm -hmm. was right, mm -hmm. but actually Nobody seems to see the connection between single and double. Mm. Um, yeah, okay, there's a question for Bach, Gianfranco, but that might be, be interesting to, to 1216. We have made a, a video on 1216 already. So um, I remember this question for another, another uh, session. Helgi asks, is there a physical difference in the metronome of today and before the change so if if are we having it today a different metronome than in Beethoven's no. time no 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 no, no so. yeah. different uh, constructions yes but uh, the 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 frequency yeah uh, of yeah is, is the same as well. so that's the thing on the metronome which whether is broken or function it takes if you put it on 60 it takes 60 times in a yes. minute yes naturally I'm not not very not always uh, no but i've i've talked to, to to a person who restores old metronomes and he says when they come in mm -hmm. 200 years old 100 years old the largest deviation he has seen is 10 percent mm -hmm. so it is possible yeah, in the yeah, most extreme yeah, cases yeah. to have an old metronome mm -hmm. that we don't know how it ticked at the beginning but now it's 10 percent but that's really very rare mm. between exact and five percent is normal mm. so they were very accurate machines yeah. Yeah. mr melzel was mm -hmm. um, okay just my 
skipping through the questions. Um, Tomacek is Beethoven generation. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, completely, yes. I guess. Yes. Yeah, yes. completely. He was born in 1774. He was 17 when he heard Don Giovanni played in Prague in eh? 1791. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly Something like yes. that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mika Mac, do you know of any historians or musicologists who are researching Tempi and maybe come to similar conclusions as yours? In other words, do you have similar conclusions? Yeah, also, uh, Johann Zonleitner, yeah, yeah, also, it's more in the direction he, of Tauzma. He, eh? he is open for the, for the problem at all, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, there are other But not too much. So. No, no. I must say, however, no, doing this on YouTube now, more and more people are contacting me mm -hmm. that they have had the same idea. Mm -hmm. But it's rather tricky to come to out yourself with this. Yes, yes. The reaction you have, oh, you're too lazy to practice. Mm. That's why mm. you make this all mm. up. Mm. But the other thing around, if you turn this around, is yeah, okay, then if if single beat was a practice, then go and play Czerny or Etudes in his tempi. It's mm. ridiculous. We it's mm. 15 notes per second yeah. constantly that you have to reach. Yes. Yes. So, um, um, why do you think we went from double to a single beat as a norm? Well, as we explained with the novella story, there is no moment where we made the change. Mm -hmm. Double beat is something that was from the history, mensual notation actually, at, by definition, mesure, mm -hmm. mensure, yeah. tact, yeah. by yeah. definition That's, was a yeah. twofold unity. Mm -hmm. And it started slowly to change towards mm -hmm. the 20th century in favor of single beat. Yes. Why? That's something that would be very interesting to research if there are letters mm -hmm. or... Yeah. 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 It is, for now it's just the two of us and... <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of topics that we could yes. dive into. Yes. So here, Czerny, Fidel asks, Czerny, motionless editions of Beethoven's piano sonatas vary quite a bit in tempo for the same movements. Is that there was a change of opinion? Well, I can answer that uh, question for you. Um, it's actually not so much difference. Czerny motionless are in line with each other. And we are not talking on when Czerny has 88 for an Allegro and Moschlis 96, that's the same range. It's mm. not that there is one digital exact tempo, but if you lay next to each other the, the Mozart tempi from both of them and their Beethoven tempi, we have five editions with, from Czerny and five editions from Moschlis. Czerny varies the most. And there are some movements where you have a considerable disagreement, even from Czerny, he's, he's notorious for that, that he sometimes slows down and speeds up, but no, n not really more than 20% in the most extreme cases. So there is statistically a line, mm -hmm. and not only from Morsles and Czerny, there is a statistical line, if you would reconstruct that from all metronome numbers we have compared mm -hmm to the notation. That's a, that's a mistake yes. that many make. They say, well, you have an andante in quarter note 88 and there one in eight note 88. What a huge difference. Mm -hmm. But then you see that the quarter note 88 has a very open structure and the eight note 88 has a very elaborated 32 second note structure. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that, but it's actually much in line with each other. Um, Emil Daler says, should tempo making markings be left to the interpreters? So should, should the tempo decisions, is this not something that is up to the performer to make? Mm, I didn't understand. So if yeah. we are pointing towards the yeah. metronome indications from yeah. the composers as a reference, Mm -hmm. But is it not so that a, a piece can be played in a tempo that is according to the taste of the performer? That we don't have to account, be accountable for those metronome numbers. So can we have on the eigene metronome yeah. You have the freedom uh, to play it, but 
uh, if you won't uh, realize the intention of the composer, you you have to be interested in in his uh, vision of yeah, tempo. Yeah, it's also yeah. my view. We we live in a time where diversity is, of course, accepted. Yes. We live also in a time where individuality is something that we see as a right, as a privilege, and that's not a privilege, it's, it's a right. Mm -hmm. In those days, there were more general principles. They applied them in their works. For instance, the Tempo Ordinario, come back always to that. It was something that was known for 60 for the second. It was something that they just applied. So mm -hmm. if you want to reconstruct yes. the original ideas of the composer, Mm -hmm. Not incorporating their tempi puts you mm -hmm. by definition outside of this research. Yes, yes. That's actually an answer, yeah. yeah. Alfred Faust is auch in the end of chat, uh, Lawrence. Oh, yeah. You know ah, each schön. other. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's freut mich. And Greg asks if you have ever uh, read the metronome patent description of, Pate of Melzo. So the patent that Melzo had. What's the patent, uh, so ah, pat ah, yeah. which is clearly single beat. It's actually only indicating mm -hmm. how much, how many ticks the device yes. has in a minute. Yeah. Yes. The frequency. Of yeah. Yes, that's always the same. Also, that that's that no discussion. Also, the indication of the frequency uh, is always by by single beat. Yeah. But. Uh, the use of of the indication is is uh, yeah twofold. And plus, does the patent describes the 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 use of the, the 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 way the device works? And it's indeed when you have it on sixty, it ticks sixty times a yes, second. It's yeah. single beat. There's no discussion yeah. about it. Yes. The question is when when you're using that as a time indicator, yeah. as a side yeah. presser. Then it's something yeah. else because yeah. then it's the metronome, the metronome. You know. And Melzel very much had the idea of commercializing the device yes. as a kind of imitator of a tact keeper, yes. a timekeeper. Yeah. So yeah. to practice, which is th the most popular use was yeah. as a tact yeah. keeper. Uh, his invention of a clock, the clock metronome yeah. uh, is this idea, the realization of this idea the clock at the beginning of a bar mm -hmm. cling Six. zwei drei vier cling and then the the single beat uh, marks the the moving of yeah. the strikes of the uh, of the parts of the time. direction yeah. Yeah. Yes. and in uh, in difference to the measure yeah. to the yeah. uh, we have made also an interview we did an interview on this on the yes, clock and metronome yes. interest look mm. it up it might interest it interest mm. you arthur is here great to see you um yeah greg found this theory very unconvincing yeah as much as i enjoy when playing clever show tempers often sound better it's a little bit contradictory but anyway mm -hmm. um Yes. Yeah, Chopin was way too slow. Yeah, that's. If you find something, if you believe something is too slow, that's of course something that's we cannot put all the listening habits behind. But it's not something with the belief system. I've always said it's a fact. The metronome number is a fact, and so if Met Chopin's metronome numbers are single beat, you have to play all of them. But we have shown in some, even Polini doesn't reach mm -hmm. some of them are reachable but overall not and then yeah go to Czerny so it's no problem to think of it that it's slow on the other hand it would surprise us if we today would still find the Chopin etude as written almost 200 years ago incredibly fast because that would mean that we have had no evolution in between that mm -hmm. is just a philosophical mm -hmm. approach but one that's mm -hmm. but anyway so yeah Chopin's double beat for me there's no 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 doubt about it you've also harmonically we're going to make some videos on the opus 10 number 4 and then the opus 10 number 12 the C minor etude is coming Monday perhaps it would be uh, very uh, 
helpful to compare etude uh, in the context of uh, Chopin. Chopin is isolated. Chopin etude. Uh, Kalkbrenner has composed etude. And, uh, he was a friend of Chopin. Mm -hmm. Berger, Louis Berger, great etude. He was uh, a pupil of Clementi and also you, you have uh, to make a, a context uh, yeah and then you see uh, also these other uh, etudes are uh, not as astonishing uh, as, as the yeah. as the Chopin etude yeah. uh, because we have uh, we strong, have the sound and yeah strong uh, Erwartungen listening uh, habits yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the same as with the Domacek we discussed in the score mm. once you don't once you lost your reference to listening habits of today with unknown music yeah. suddenly a tempo of Chopin what you think is too slow applied to an unknown piece would be seen uh, regarded as incredibly fast mm. if you just could step back a l one moment for the c sharp etudes just imagine what was written at in those days mm. then it would it is astonishing speed it is astonishing fast it's it's incredibly difficult but yeah we have played Rachmaninoff concerti and Prokofiev concerti which are of course so difficult and still we see Chopin as more difficult. It's, it's, it doesn't work very well, but anyway. Gianfranco um, Cavallaro Lorenz adds to the discussion of tact. Also in Italian you have tempo and misura have the same sense. Misura is also like battuta, mm -hmm. space between two vertical lines and battuta means also something with one beat of first more loud. Exactly the mm -hmm. same as yes. in all historical yes. sources, even yeah. Gottfried Walter has mm -hmm. written Walter, about yes. this. Yes. So it's it's yeah. it's a it's a tempo. It's uh, the the, the much more, yeah. Moving, yeah. Tucked. Beat. Yeah, Mega Mix I uh, love the train sound of the etude, that's the F minor, I think it's okay. And we have made a Polini video, I have seen that. Mm -hmm where Polini slows down at the last page, even under double beat tempo yeah. of Chopin mm -hmm. for the expressive parts and also for the repeated yeah. Mm -hmm. There is actually, when you look into the scores, there's always, there's, there already is no doubt for the double beat, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Is Liszt double beat, Lorenz, Fidel asks? <sighs> Just say yes. yes I, I think so. I think, I think so. Yes. Uh, List, of course, lived a long life. Mm -hmm. but the, maybe that it is a change. Uh, Wagner uh, um, finished metronomization. He wanted yeah. not not yet uh, give metronomic in indications. Brahms too. He After 1850, yeah. the metronome was out of fashion. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's something that would be interesting to research. Mm. Why? Why? Yes. It came back later. Mm -hmm. Van Bülow, for instance, he is very fond on giving his metronomizations for Beethoven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, Greg says it would be a good idea for him to write article with references and screenshots from original documents where he could in analytical form attempt to prove his theory. Well, Greg, there, you will never ever find one document except the Edvardieu where it's clearly written mm -hmm. an answer mm -hmm. for us. This needs to be reconstructed like a puzzle. And it's from both sides. Mm -hmm. If you would defend single beat, it won't be e it won't be possible either to have one single document it's a context that counts and of mm. course that is what mm. we today in our digital age we like asking a question on google and the answer comes yeah. in 0 0.0003 yeah. seconds yeah. it won't happen here yes. the, the the you have to return always to the metronome markings 
are you able to play them yes all of them and many people say yes without trying then we have a point of to start but it's not possible mm. so they are for me at the highest level a mm. theoretical backup mm. is something that keeps you busy for a while but see all the videos I've made on Tempo, also our interviews, and that already gives an abundant uh, pile of a large pile of well, several aspects. Yes. It are aspects. Yeah. Okay. Then it's on harpsichord, and John defends the clavichord. I've heard some beautiful harpsichords in Brugge as well. Some beautiful clavichords as well. Um, the Beethoven pathetic Trappa writes convinced me completely. Suddenly heard how Beethoven was imitating Italian opera. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it again on the pianoforte with also the application of double beat for the middle part, the adagio, mm. which is one of the most difficult movements. Yes, yes. it's really, very, really slow. Very slow, yes. You need to feel the inner yeah. strength. Yeah. Alfred Faust asks Hans von Bülow double beat. Answer I to think, that. I yeah. think yes. <laughs> His metronome markings for Beethoven are his own, uh, but very close to Czerny. Yes. Analysis. And I have a, a very unknown uh, little book uh, with uh, indications from uh, for works from Handel exactly as journey journey yeah very very speedy yeah very and very by the way the journey bach numbers even glenn gold doesn't reach them mm -hmm. the inventions of journey i've made a video on that yeah, the, the I've re i have to remake that video it's insanely fast it's yeah. even glenn gold the little preludes mm -hmm. glenn gold is trying to i think reach the original journey numbers but he's not coming close Mm -hmm. and it's incredibly fast so yeah, yeah, yeah. the piano 40 mega mac should be arriving in a few weeks not that it's completely ready but that we need to play it and um okay well. just reading yeah okay ribato and accelerando okay we will make some episodes on ribato, which has a different meaning in the 18th century than in the 19th century. So let's turn now to uh, past six. Lorenz, I, I would very much like to thank you for your time and also for the effort talking in English. I know you're not used to that, but I think you did a great job. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching and asking questions and for being with us actually here in this journey which is wonderful actually to be able to share so much with you. I do it a little bit more through the videos, but Lourdes and I have regular contacts. According, um, but concerning our project on the Taktun Pendelschlag, the new book, we made an important decision that we saved for the last part. It will be finished and published next December. Mm. So not this year, but deadline. Deadline is at Christmas 2019. The plan is to have recorded four or five discs next year on my piano photo with Beethoven. And Christmas will see the disc, the publication of the Hammerklavier Sonata. That's for me the goal for mm -hmm. 2019. And then the book will be together with mm -hmm. the recording. Would be nice, huh? Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. we will need a lot of you to help us with that. And so I um, would like to finish also to invite you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to just hit that subscribe button. If you want to stay tuned for the live streams, there is a bell icon next to the subscription button. And if you click that, you will be notified by YouTube. So just clicking the subscription button is not enough anymore for YouTube for you to be notified, which is rather strange. There is a bell icon for which you can set notifications that you want to receive. So if you want to get a notification every time we go live, you can actually um, you have the possibility to uh, make YouTube notify you every time we go live. 
we'll do some more live streams in the future as said at the beginning of the summer summertime here is a little bit i'm pulling down a little bit the schedule because um summertime with the kids and we have so much so much other things to do now the buckle bell vinyl disc and cd has been released in june we have to promote it we have to set it send it out to a lot of people which takes a lot of work <coughs> and finally i thank also my patreons we are now with about 80 patrons which is just mind-blowing for me supporting the things we're doing here on the channel and really make it possible to continue um, with this so tempo research will be a, an important factor for the coming year so thank you all for watching and hope to see you soon again bye goodbye